So in this video, we're going to look at IQIs. What are they? What are the differences? Where do you put them? What are they for? So IQ, IQIs, what are they? What do they look like? How do we identify them and make sure everything's okay? Well, first packet here, what we've got, if I open it up, I've got my IQI here, so I'll take this out. This is an ASTM number six. It basically means that the thickest wire here, the one that's underneath the number, is a, a wire six, and then we count down from there and the wires will get thinner. So that's how we identify it. So we've got our standard and our number. So there's one there, put that back in. I've got one here, which is a European norm standard type. So here we've got a 10 FEEN, which means that it's a number 10 wire beneath that so this this one underneath is a number 10 it's steel and it's in relation to the uh, european norm standard i've then got this ticker tape sort of impressed uh thing which is also inside the plastic packet as well it's not just stuck on it, it, it's in there um which is 5r5gl and if you look inside the box here you can see we've got 5R5GL for the Declaration of Conformity. So they're almost like the calibration cert type thing that says this is in line with the standard. Uh, on the back of this one, you'll see that we've got just for every wire size, so the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, we've written the thickness of each of those wires down uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really normally come too easily readable. So if you just want to have a quick look and go, well, what, what size is that wire? There, there you go. The thickness of the wires are there. And you can see as we go up the number, the thickness of that wire drops. So that's that one. We've got to keep these, these care, a lot of care on these and make sure they don't go missing or get damaged. Here's an H1 FEN which is a step wedge type. So this has a variety of different thicknesses of steel, which is the FE within the packet. And each bit of steel, if I can catch it right, I don't know if you can see it on there, has two holes in it. And you have different thicknesses of steels and different sizes of holes. Different way of, of using an IQI, a uh, different type, but you know, equally as good. The, these are quite expensive. The last check on, on an H1, you were looking at about $500 uh, with the conversion rate of pounds at the minute. It's not far off 500 quid. So, you know, you don't, you don't want to lose these. So they, you know, they're in plastic to keep them fairly safe. They're fairly bendy. You know, you can wrap them around a pipe and stick some sellotape on or, you know, some masking tape to hold it in position. And, and keep that right, that's okay. What can go wrong? Well, here is my six FEEN. And if I take this out of the packet, again, I can check and I've got my uh, reference to my uh, declaration of conformity. But when you look at these, it's got wet. It's starting to rust. It's, it's not gonna be really usable for very much longer there. It's, it, it, it's a shame. I don't know what happened with these. I hadn't used this one in a while and I took it out to do this video and saw that, you know, it was starting to, it, it it's damaged and uh, I'll use it for training. Well, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it for, for that anymore. I wouldn't use it in a, a production radiograph. So that's a an IQI, basically what they look like. You see, I got these from Fidgen years ago. Uh, but they're not, you know, fidgeting on sponsoring this video or anything. Um, and here we go. That, that's, that's an IQI. So when placing my IQI on my weld, there's two methods or two trains of thought on where the IQI should be placed. And normally that's denoted either by your specification or, or your client requirements. 
uh, here I'm trying to show both of them. So here we've got two FEEN10 uh, IQIs. One is across the world and one is off of the world. Now, there's a, a sort of debate still ongoing, really, about which is the best place to place these. And there was a very, very prevalent discussion about placing it off of the weld in case the wire was to mask a defect. Now, I think that's, that's quite, you're quite unlucky if that happens. Um, the wires are quite small. You saw before the, the size of the wires as they come down. We're talking about, you know, less than half a mil and, and below. Okay, if you're working on something with very high integrity and anything in that weld is a cause for rejection, I understand that. And I can see you're putting something onto the, the plate material thickness itself, but maybe shoot... Uh, two radiographs with the IQI moved. And the reason I say that is I prefer this one, the one across the weld, and that's because if we looked at the cross section of the welded plate, we'll see that the wall thickness for the plate is not the same as what we see in the wall thickness of the weld. So the wall thickness for the weld section is the plate or pipe thickness plus the excess weld metal in excess penetration. Now that that could mean, you know, on thin material, say you're welding a one, one millimeter thick material and you're running on a one mil cap and a one mil root, your material is going to be three times thicker than it is in, in the base material. And that could really throw out your sensitivities in your proof because really what you're looking for is sensitivity and quality through a very different material if you just put it on the base material itself. But again, your client or your standard specifications and standards and requirements will state where to put it. But there is there is a difference on, on either one. Now, here I'm showing them on the X-ray side, so the source side of the sample, but there is a situations where you might actually put them to the back of that of that weld you know you should always i believe always try to put them on the source side first but if you want to put them on the film side you need to denote that with a lead letter to show that the iqi is not where you think it should be now the difference between that can actually gain or lose depends which way you go an extra wire so you could show more sensitivity by putting it on the film side than putting it on the source side. So we have to be clear about where we're, where we're putting the IQI. So as a standard radiographic setup, there we have, you know, I put my IQI across the weld. I have my source, I make my exposure, and then we pull the latent image onto a film, and the IQI will be you know, a part of that latent image. So when we put it onto the light box, we'll be able to see and count back our wires and show our sensitivity. So that is a very quick look at an IQI, what it looks like, where you'd place it, and maybe some of the pros and cons of the placement. In the next video, we'll boot up the light box and we'll have a look at some radiographs and actually look at how we would count back from those radiographs uh, for the IQI and work out sensitivity in the two main ways. One is a calculation, one is just the wire that we can see. So I hope that helps and at least gives you a quick introduction to an IQI. And good luck with your studies and I'll see you in the next one.